get this all on the boat now. Hey! On, let's go, let's go! How did you get here? You really need to see this. Now is really not the best time. No, Nate! What are you doing? You really need to watch this. It's just... What? Video games are effectively interactive movies. So why does Hollywood keep making movies about movies? From cash grab to masterpiece, let's pick each of these adaptations apart. So what did Uncharted get right? Was it the action, the narrative, the casting? I think we all agree Marky Mark was not it. Let's see what they got right and what needed some work. Uncharted is a 15 year long franchise developed by Naughty Dog and several other studios. Now, fun fact, same company that made Crash Bandicoot. Now, I've played all the mainline games and I'm continually pleased with what the Uncharted series has to offer. And who am I? <laughs> I'm Chelsea Bites. I love to build computers and I also love to play video games. And everything in between is all the nerdy stuff I love as well. If you haven't watched the movie or played the games, spoilers ahead. Now, first, for anyone who hasn't played Uncharted, I'll give you a breakdown. Mind you, the purpose of this video is not to describe in detail each of the games, but my impression of them and how well it translates onto the big screen. Okay, flashcards. Uncharted 1, 2007. Now, this game introduces Nathan, Sully, and Elena, who are on the hunt for the treasure of El Dorado. I'm sure you've seen this plot before. Now, the rest of this game proceeds in an exciting Indiana Jones shootout with all the sash you could order. The game was uh, rough, but satisfying to beat all around. Now, it follows the predictable story beats of two unassuming heroes who stop the bad guys from stealing an ancient cursed treasure. Where Tomb Raider has a similar formula, it removes the badass Lara Croft and puts a slew of sarcastic voice actors whose characters studied a bit too much history. Now, the banter went a long way in this game. Uncharted 2, Among Thieves, 2009. This game is the go. It has one of the best intros I've ever seen, an instant hook. Arguably one of the best of all the games combined. Now, we start off dangling from a derailed train, hurt and running out of time. We go through some flashbacks where we meet Chloe, who makes a deal with Nathan and Flynn on, you guessed it, <laughs> more treasure. We might as well be pirates because we don't get enough booty. And not just any treasure, Marco Polo's lost fleet. However, what's a game without deceit? Nate is tricked into handing over the map to Shambhala. What proceeds is some of the most exciting adventure games with amazing set pieces, chase scenes, and one of the most brutal beatings I never wish to catch in real life. Now, this game did exactly what a sequel should do. It expanded on mechanics, scenery, characters, everything. It improved and brought more to the table. You'll end up in some frustrating fights, though. Clear out! <laughs> Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception, 2011. This one is my favorite. This game is almost the epitome of what an Uncharted game should be. The immersion is off the charts, and I feel like this was the beginning of feeling like a true treasure hunter. I was learning when I played this game. And we get some real relationship development. I'll admit it was a bit weird. Elena and Nate were married and then separated off screen because Nate can't shake his archaeology addiction, but that doesn't stop how enjoyable they all are on screen together. Uncharted 4. A Thief's End, 2016. If you thought the games could get any more outlandish, it absolutely does here. Nathan has retired, but uh, 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 
he has a brother we've never heard about. And that means he's here to get his brother out on an adventure. While this was a wild shock, Sam is so likable, you overlook it pretty quick. Shout out to Troy Baker. Now, they go on to do the most amazing chase sequence with the most terrifying Black Hummer I've ever seen. And in the same stroke, give Nathan the most wholesome ending. What? Is that it? You asked for it. I love it. Of course, there's deception, there's drama and adventure. It also has the best boss battle out of the whole series. This was a great send off for our beloved characters because sometimes it's okay for everyone to get a happy ending. Spoiler, none of our main cast dies. Bullshit. Language. Uncharted, Lost Legacy, 2017. If you love Chloe, this is for you. She teams up with Nadine Cross on her own journey with one of my favorite duo dynamics across the collection. If Chloe is fun and spontaneous, Nadine is the opposite, reserved and disciplined. Oh, Nadine. We are not Okay, fine. If you're missing Uncharted after finishing all four of the other games, Lost Legacy will show you that the formula for this game can work for just about any kind of character. By the end, I just want them both to be together. The magic is just so palpable. Go ahead. Look, be blessed. Much obliged. Wow. And that's all of them. You have to play two and three at least. Let's talk casting. Nathan Drake. Don't get me wrong, I'm not mad at Tom Holland for being cast as Nathan. It's just when they cast him as Nathan that just feels wrong. The events that Nathan Drake goes through in the movie happen when he's middle-aged in the video games. He's more rugged and well-traveled, and while Tom is a great actor, he's not convincing me that he's that Nathan Drake. I just need a little more Nathan Fillion, you know? Now, this uncertainty could have been completely avoided if they just placed the movie in a different time in Nathan's life. Just tell me this side-by-side -side doesn't make sense. And Chloe, first of all, in the games, we never meet a young Chloe. Now, it's just weird that they introduce her at this stage. Chloe Fraser can get it. I didn't tell her right yet, but she's cool. Hey, Chloe. They didn't even know each other. They did have a history, but it definitely wasn't that far back. Now, if we had a Chloe flashback, I feel like Sophia absolutely would have carried this role. But I have the same complaint as I did with Tom. Absolutely too young for the setting. Now, Chloe is also a very witty, sultry woman. Because that's such a big part of her character, it almost feels like we're watching someone cosplay her. Now, the one part they got right was that she wasn't to be trusted and she wasn't the trusting type. They just focused on it a bit too much. And finally, Marky Mark. Honestly, I knew when he was gonna be the Sullivan, I could never take this movie seriously. You're, you're telling me Mark could pull off suave, sultry, sully. How much did he pay to play this role? Like, who allowed him to massacre my boy? I'm offering you a real ticket out of here. A chance to see places you only read about in books. What do you say? <sighs> if Sully talked to me at a bar, I'd consider going to dinner with the man. But Mark? And he doesn't even act like Sully. They write Sully as this scumbag who is so untrustworthy, and it takes until the end of the movie for him to finally be a decent guy. 
And this is the exact opposite tone of what Sully is in the games. He quite literally took a huge gamble on Nate, adopted him on the spot. He didn't have a huge moral conflict because he's Sully, the big lovable uncle who's always there to support your questionable decisions. Other than that, I love the characters they introduced. Santiago and Braddock honestly carried a lot of this movie for me. Antonio Banderas and Tati Gabriel were absolute villains. Their roles weren't super complicated and I think it made them shine even more. However, I think Braddock was supposed to be a nod to Nadine Cross, who is a badass herself. My first impressions of Uncharted were jarring. Firstly, we needed more background for this to really sink in with the audience. The movie needed to show how Nate spent a lot of his life as an orphan, ending up as a thief at 15 in Colombia. That's how we were supposed to meet Sully, not in some random bar in New York. After a stiff back and forth, they somehow agree to work together to find Sam, who apparently had been regularly sending postcards to Nathan until a few years ago. Hmm. Secondly, there were a few chase scenes, which Uncharted is notorious for. I think it was a good nod, but I think they could have gone a lot further. And does anybody think they were missing the greenery uh, around here? I feel like so much of Uncharted is uncovering a temple or running through the jungle. It was severely lacking in this movie. And finally, why did they mash up all of the games? Uncharted is just jaw-dropping at points. Things that literally mark the series and make it unique. The movie takes a lot of these moments and treats them like Easter eggs, when in fact they are pivotal moments in the games. The narrative still has a chance. Nathan can still find Sam, meet Elena, his love interest in the game, and continue on his path to follow Sir Francis Drake. It felt like this narrative took a back seat in the movie though. It became more about, well, I stabbed you in the back and no, I stabbed you in the back. And then we all lived happily ever after in the end. There's just too much focus on the conflict at hand and not enough on the characters' personalities. The banter and discoveries Nate makes when he's running from the bad guys and uncovering archeological myths of legend is what flavors this franchise. And unfortunately, we get none of that from the movie. This is important to the direction of the story the movie is trying to build because each character's relationship with one another explains why they act the way they act. Honestly, they introduce Sam way too early. Now, yes, that's a waste and I know Sam shows up really late in the games. Everybody was like, what the hell? Nate has a brother? He never mentioned this. And it did feel a bit cheap in the game, but it could have been reused in the movie in such a great way. Maybe a nod to a sequel, if we get that. Now, in the end, after all of the issues I have with this movie, it definitely has the most potential to improve. However, a lot of what makes Uncharted, Uncharted was left barely touched in the movie, while the big moments were rushed through. It feels like someone read the cliff notes of all the games to the directors and the directors thought it was just one big package, one big game. Ugh. Overall, Uncharted is a shiny movie with no real substance an unsteady cast with a generic setting that made me feel like I was watching a Lifetime movie. The games have a vastly rich and beautiful history and landscape, usually sweeping players off to places they could only imagine. However, I'm sure to the general public, this would be an exciting action movie with a couple of hallmark scenes. This movie is a miss with its core audience and it barely leaves an impression with the new one. 
what I consider a successful video game adaptation is that it creates a new interest for the franchise. I don't know if Uncharted inspires people to play the games. It doesn't make the audience ask questions about any of the characters, the plot, nothing. The most exciting thing you're left with is that Sam is alive, which I feel is just a reminder that the movie happened to mention him at the top. He's kind of forgettable. <sighs> In the end, Uncharted is exciting, absolutely, but it also deserved so much more. I was looking forward to a parkour puzzle-solving adventure with a daring duo. I mean, after watching movies like Monkey Man, I really wish we got that level of action because Nate had paws. Overall, I give Uncharted a guess I can watch this rating. It's not the worst, but it's below average. Let me know if there's something I missed in my review. Did you agree? Leave it in the comments. I'm Chelsea Bites, nerd extraordinaire who has a passion for video games and the movies that try to mimic their magic. Of course, I also love to build computers, I love tabletop, and so much more. If you want to check me out, catch me on Twitch, TikTok, of course my Twitter, Discord, and here, if you haven't subscribed yet, if you've watched this whole video, please consider dropping me a follow. See y'all next time.